Hey, what's up? Andrew here again from Offshore Audio. I got asked a while ago about various things such as compression and gating, just real basic stuff. Um, and I've covered compression already. I'll leave a link to that down below and you can watch the video up here if you've not already. But this time I'm going to take a quick dive into gating. Let's dive in. Uh, this is going to be quite a quick one because I'm outside and it's freezing. So gating keeps the sound from coming out of the speakers on the channel until it reaches a certain level. And that's really, really useful for something like a drum, where you get a lot of background noise from cymbals and things, but then when you actually get the signal of the drum hitting in the microphone, it goes much higher than the background noise, like a kick drum. Really useful as well with stuff like kick drums for reducing feedback, because if you're in a small venue and there's lots of bass rolling around, then you find that it can quite easily get picked up by that microphone and the kick drum and resonated within the drum itself. And so you end up with loads and loads of feedback. Let's have a look at how gates work then, right? So we select our channel and then you'll hear this kick drum coming in. You can see it on the meter down here. And I'm just going to select my gate here and I'm going to turn it on. Now you're hearing no sound because I've got my gate threshold turned all the way up and the signal is not high enough to open the gate. So what I do is I turn the threshold down. It's very cold, so this dial is not working properly. And then you see we reach a certain point where now the hits of the kick drum are opening the gate and the sound is coming out. So the problem with this is that if you set this incorrectly, then you miss certain hits of the kick drum. So if I turn it up a little, I'm missing some hits on the kick drum here. In a gig situation, you would obviously know that because you would hear the acoustic drum and quite likely the drummer would tell you. So we just need to really fine tune this threshold here because if you put it too low, then you're going to end up getting all the bleed from the cymbals and things like that. There are other settings we can use to dial that in as well. Primarily, let's look at our attack, hold and decay. The attack is how quickly the gate opens. So you're going to want to, for a drum, have that really, really fast because drums have a really fast attack. If you don't, you might end up hearing a clicking sound or something when the drum triggers the gate, or alternatively, you might just lose all the attack of the drum because it's in that first few milliseconds. But similarly, you can use this creatively, like if you want your drum to have more attack, you can bring things like the hold on the gate and the decay down, and it's going to end up having that just that first hard bit of your kick drum. And then none of the boomy sort of tail of the kick drum. But you want to be really, really careful as well because things like jazz drummers use a lot of ghost notes and things and you'll end up missing them. So it's always important to talk to the artist when you're using gate and make sure that they know the effects of what's going to happen. Another problem as well is if you have this decay and this hold set really long. So hold is how long the gate stays open and decay is how quickly the sound dies down again after it, the gate has closed. But if you have things really, really long, then you won't really deal with the problems like um, hearing the bleed of, of other instruments or in a live setting quite a lot of the time the bigger problem is feedback, lo especially low frequency feedback in instruments like a kick drum. Of course, similarly, we can also do this with the snare. So I've got my snare selected and I bring the channel up. And again, you can maybe hear some of it here. Some of these notes are dropping. So what we want to do is we want to bring our threshold down slightly to make sure that we're getting every single hit. So as always, I hope you found that one helpful. If you're struggling with any basic concepts, I'd always recommend checking out my workshop. You can get the first module free, links down below. The main takeaway here with gating, I think, is just good communication with the person on the stage and paying attention to those attack and release times. You can really change the tone of an instrument and it's a real invaluable tool for, for dealing with that low end feedback. So if you're not already gating your kick drums, start doing it now. Don't worry, a jazz drummer will be the first one to tell you if you gated it and they don't want to gate it. Leave me a comment, let me know if you're having any problems with gating or if you've not experimented with it before. I wanna hear about 
irrigating disasters. Tell me all about them, leave me a comment. If there's anything else you want to know, drop a comment down below and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.